Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's performance will include Flow Rider lyrics, VeggieTales references, and at least one terrible homeschool video game. All this and more as we celebrate our one year anniversary here on Creative Things. What is up, Jake Paulers, and welcome to the Created Things Podcast. <laughs> I am the new host, Kyle Meineke. I killed Jacob Popcheck, and Father Gabriel and I are now the hosts. Um, we're super excited to talk to you today. Uh, we have a lot in store. We got a lot to uncover. Uh, Drama Alert Nation. Um, with me today is Father Gabriel. He's a priest, I think. And then I have a, a, a another dude here. He's not Jacob Popcheck. He does therapy and art, and uh, his beautiful wife Jess, who has helped what us up? greatly <laughs> in the podcast. This and is I, the ghost. This is the ghost of Jacob Flores Popcheck. Yes, you get paid to do something. You put together oh. all the tech of this podcast. You you are the mastermind behind the idiocy. As he well actually, as he actually the, gave me a bionic heart too. We've discovered that I wow. didn't have enough of one, so he gave me a bionic heart because he's a tech master. And you have a much yeah. higher uh, tolerance for bionic sentimentality now as a result. I do, but only bionic sentimentality. So like um like the later uh Terminator movies I rem- I'm sort of obsessed with now, but uh everything else I hate. So there it is. There it is. So I want to I want to make sure and I, I I'm super grateful for your very, very silly intro, Kyle. But this is also a momentous occasion. So I want to make sure that the the two of those who are joining us who are maybe not on this podcast super often uh, get their their fair shake. Of, so, of course, I am artist and psychotherapist Jacob Flores Popcheck, regular co-host of this, along with Father Gabriel Toretta. For those of you, perhaps, who are just choosing this episode to listen to the first, first time, which yes, congratulations it's easy to make on mistakes. making great life decisions. Yes. Um, but this is a very special episode, very spe- uh, special occasion. And so we wanted two people who are normally behind the audio to come and join us. So... This intro was, of course, brought to you by our engineer and producer, Kyle Meineke. Everyone say, hi, Kyle Meineke. Hi, Kyle Meineke. And and as he introduced, uh, sitting next to me is our other producer, my extremely talented and quirky wife, uh, Jessica Flores Bobchick. Hello. <laughs> she said <I> was, quirkily. <laughs> I was actually expecting Kyle to say, Oh, and here's our fourth dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then he proceeded to be complimentary towards yeah. me, which is very rare. Yeah, because I, I don't hate a you like I hate Jacob. Yeah. Oh, yeah fair. Ja- Kyle's mm-hmm. got to put on his nice face mm-hmm. for the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his nice face. Because we're so Jess mentioned this right before we hit record. Uh, one of our long term goals of this podcast is to try to get a real sort of fandom going for Kyle. We want there to be Kyle stands. We want there to be women who who sort of have us maybe a subreddit for him. Uh, men can be part of this subreddit too. We don't exclude. We're equal opportunity. We just want like a lot of Kyle fan art, a lot of like anime type stuff. Kyle army rise up. <laughs> once once so he gets his first uh, arm tattoo like on somebody else's arm of his face then we'll know uh, he's really made it you know oh yeah that'd be amazing once people adapt so my personality as their own yeah yeah that'll yeah. be good they'll be like Im- imitating your personality It'd be incredible my yeah. whole identity is pretty much liking kyle <laughs> oh god i can't imagine so I, I like this this would never happen but i i would not want to exist in a world where that was a reality uh, well, it's gonna happen, dude. Just start bracing yourself now. After this pod, between this and the fake saints episode, which is the only other episode Kyle's been on, <laughs> between th- this is enough to build a fandom. Mm. These two things alone. So anyway, that's one of the long-term goals of this podcast. One of the other long-term goals, though, has just been accomplished, and that's why this is a very special episode. Because one year ago, around the posting of this episode. We posted our very first episode for this podcast. Woo-woo. That means 
This is our one year anniversary. What is that? Is that's not, is that paper? The paper anniversary? Is that what it is? I um, know. I don't know. It's all, it's all e-ink now though. So it doesn't really, I mean, it's yeah, digital. It doesn't it's matter. Digital it one year, matter. you know, it's complicated. Yeah. So anyway, this is our one year anniversary, which immediately I learned sets us apart and above, uh, 90% of other podcasts, which I guess don't make it past the fourth episode. That makes so, sense. Yeah. That all seems to track. Yeah. And then like something like 80% of those then don't of like the remaining 10% don't uh, make it past a year. So we are now, we're now cooking with gas, everybody. And I'm very excited for this. So uh, we prepared some celebratory beverages here. Jessica, would you do the honors, please? Ooh, Ooh beautiful. look at that beautiful champagne beer. so delicious Kyle's beer. tasty all, oh, beer there we go let's let's pour some of this delicious juice are you going to hear Gabriel, this in, do you you're you going to hear this in surround here? sound because uh because i this is uh we have an iterative thing situation happening here where like i've i've 3d printed some to join you oh wow that's amazing <laughs> hold on it's going to be loud that's so great there it is i also printed i also 3d printed a cork don't worry it's um that's just how the internet (laughs) works these days did you know that's how the internet works it's got a bunch of tubes yeah it's got a bunch of tubes um they get clogged sometimes and you can print champagne yeah here i'm gonna put mine down so i can i can help jessica with hers help me with my (laughs) champagne asmr (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh jessica what are you gonna open up an asmr channel of your own can that also be like a sub branch of the of the of the uh, podcast (laughs) jessica doing asmr this this jessica's asmr was presented to you (laughs) by created things sponsored by catholic creatives Sponsored by oh. <laughs> <laughs> a really good ASMR has, has to have like twenty sponsors. Mm-hmm. In fact, like most of the as ASMR is just like the lady like reading the name of the sponsors mm-hmm. very quietly while like rubbing and, a towel. Uh, and Jessica, just for those of you not watching the video version of this, Jessica just poured literally the largest glass of champagne <laughs> I've ever seen. It's like a glass of iced tea. Show it to us. <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta I mean, celebrate. To you gotta fair. celebrate somehow. It's it's champagne. We have to drink Let's it all. Put, put it tonight. towards the There's camera. Let's us. see it. Yeah, it's true. Respect. Nice. Filled. Filled. All like right. Three quarters of the way up. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers y'all. That is a, a good champagne glass. Oh Fine. yeah. Mm. That is nice and dry. That's good. <sighs> I like that. That's really nice. I thought that Kyle just yes. has a standard beer. I know. I didn't have time to buy champagne. Well, why don't you have Miller High Life, the champagne of beers? I, I we had a, a a party yesterday at our church, and I donated all my my High Life to the Beer Foundation at the church. Oh, the next party, that's, that's very selfless. That's, that's very where my, selfless. My High Life will go to. Yeah, mm. I no longer have the champagne of beers, but if you see this beer in your store, Carlsberg, it is a Pilsner, Danish style. It is probably one of the best beers. It even style. says it on the can. Ah. Probably the best beer if you can read backwards. Yeah, no. well, <laughs> and they wouldn't be allowed to say it if it wasn't probably true. Yeah, I think that's how marketing works in America. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Actually mean and in Denmark. Mean. And apparently, and or, beer, in, or in Danish, yeah. Danish style at least. Yep, 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 yep. And Kyle actually discovered this beer at <laughs> a wine bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went to we went to this like, bar. Is that the beer he discovered at the wine bar? Yeah. Is that the- <laughs> so we went to this bar in Cincinnati, and uh, I, it was a lot fancier than I realized. Uh, very snobby. I asked for a high life, and they said we don't sell those kinds of beers here. Oh my gosh! Um, but this is like what we do have, so you could get this. And I tried it's it. Probably the best beer in the world. So yeah. It's it's good, but and then uh, after afterwards, Kyle was trying so hard to find it, and he just kept googling beer with a <laughs> green can. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. It took it took a while to oh, find no. it. Oh no! I changed you your ever life. You it. were like, "Oh, this is actually a fantastic beer. I love this." Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like that improved my alcoholism things. a lot. Sure. Created Things is brought to you guys by Carlsberg Beer. Carlsberg Beer. <laughs> the best, probably the best beer 
in the world. Buy some today. Drink responsibly. 6.3 alcohol content per metric ounce. I don't know. That's not science. That didn't make any sense. That's okay. It's beer. It doesn't have to make sense. Mm -hmm. So the topic for today's episode is both sort of Mac. So, so micro we're talking about us and our experience from this year and how, uh, what we've learned along the way, funny anecdotes, like the ones we just shared, of course, sort of reminiscing, nostalgizing as one does. Um, but the, uh, the kind of macro context for this is I thought, you know, since we are an arts podcast, it might be fun to just kind of talk about the art form of podcasts. It's uh, like themselves itself. Uh, I thought that would be kind of an interesting thing to explore using our own experiences sort of as a jumping off point for exploring podcasts as an art form. Cause it's a pretty new art form comparatively speaking, this idea of sort of long form uh, audio content is, is weird and definitely unprecedented. I mean, I've worked in radio in some way or another for most of my life. Um, so this is definitely, I mean, a novel concept for, for those of us who have done that. Um, and yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to explore. I think probably Jessica is the most expert at podcasts among all four of us in terms of just what they are and, and content. And she was really instrumental in making this podcast sound the way it does. Um, and then it's probably Kyle because he has, you know, the audio background and, and a good amount of, of knowledge. There. And, then, and then, and then me, and then way down at the bottom in terms of experience with podcasts, this good old Father Gabriel. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, it's a me. That's a lot of you, huh? Uh, yeah. So listen, I'm, I'm going to share this right now. So ever since, you know, the dawn of time, when, uh, when people decided that they were going to invent new ways to bore other people, <sighs> um, people started <laughs> to recommend to me like, hey, you should like listen to this podcast. And like, eventually I learned what podcasts were. Um, and I was like, outrage. Like, why would you ever, why would you ever suggest that? Why would you ever suggest that I listen to like the history of Rome in 376 episodes? Why would you ever, why would you ever even do that? You know, I'm I mean, a human being. Why would ever do that? People, your go-to response, generally speaking, is outrage. So it doesn't narrow it down. Also, especially. also outrageously, outrageously inappropriate enthusiasm. So it could have been one or the other, but this was how it was. Fair. Um, and uh, and then people spent about I don't know ten years or so recommending that I listen to podcasts. Um, uh, and finally, I just told one of my friends, "You do realize that I'm just never going to listen to a podcast, right? Like this is just <laughs> literally never going to happen." Um, just because if I wanted to be bored, I would have other ways of doing it. Um, which is fine. I figured this is intuitive. Um, but then I did finally eventually break my own principle because when I was, uh, when I was first learning German, um, I got to a point with like various things and then I needed like more audio input. And so I used this, like, uh, there's a German, like sort of German for learners program called Deutsche Welle the german way uh that uh, they have an audio like a it's a it's a kind of a podcast thing for like learning german called wieso nicht mm -hmm. uh and i listened to wieso nicht for a while uh i think like maybe 10 episodes which are like 10 minutes each uh and at the end of it i was like well that was horrible uh i can give you some reasons wieso nicht that means why not um and uh and that was the last podcast i ever listened to so I listened to about 10 episodes of, uh, of Deutsche Welle's Wieso nicht, um, found it that found that what it did was lack luster. Um, and that's about the entirety Called of my experience out. with podcasts. Yes. That's, Called that's about the entirety out. of my experience Taken with podcasts. And um, so there it is. I mean, like we have our own, so, uh, which I have occasionally heard parts of. Um, so I can <laughs> say now maybe I've heard more of, more of our podcast than any other. Um, but yeah, that is, that is, I'm going to say at this point heretofore, wherewith the entirety of my experience with podcasts so there it is seems like you just haven't found the right one see you this is what looking. everyone says you have, to find, you have to find your soulmate is, oh, i know my soulmate podcast i mean i admit i was just like i was trying to remember the name of my deutsche welle wieso nicht uh podcast since i was just looking at like podcasts and like sure enough because they do learn pretty rapidly about you uh they just recommended me this like uh like the history of austria in 28 episodes um german podcast i mean german language podcast obviously from an austrian guy 
and I'm probably going to listen to that because I'm an idiot, but I'm just going to be bored the whole time. That's just how it's going to work. So I don't know. Maybe I'll find my soulmate. But the point is, my podcast exposure is about to explode. Okay. I feel like finding the right podcast is like finding the right friend group. Because so many podcasts are like a bunch of people just hanging out, having a conversation. Drinking champagne. And so you Talking about their anniversary. Keep- <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> sitting in our living room you get to scoot on the couch with those random people and hang out with them but i feel like you have to find that group niche group of people that you enjoy hanging out with that's I what could see that podcast is like i could see that i could see that um yeah i admit i've mostly been drawn in theory to the ones that are sort of like here is a series of academic lectures broken up into vaguely podcastable units um, because, you know, whatever, uh, which may contribute to why I think of them as like a, a never ending world of soul crushing boredom. Just a thought. Might be it. That's interesting that, that you have that experience. So what was it? What was your thought or like, I don't, I don't think I've actually ever talked to you about this, but when I approached you about doing a podcast, because at the point at which I approached Father Gabriel to do this podcast, I had like joked about it a couple of times over the course of literally a few years. Uh, and then you and I were driving around in your weird like blueberry car. It's a smart car, excuse me. It has feelings. It's, literally, it's a real boy. You drive a sunflower seed. You drive do. an actual sunflower seed. I do. I do. It's, it's a little also, chocolate kiss. Yes, it's adorable. Yeah. So we're driving around in his weird chocolate kiss on wheels and uh, had like a particularly good conversation. And, and like so many annoying self-involved white men before me, I said, we should like we should have a podcast. We're yeah. so interesting. I think our friendship is just really good and we should have a podcast, uh, you know, which is basically the the mating call of Caucasian men at this point. In 2022. Anyway, so what was your thought? Like you have this super negative bordering on uh noble savage approach to to podcasting. What was why did you agree to do this? I guess is my question. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, I do like to talk though. I mean, it doesn't mean I want to listen to like other people do it, but I do like to talk. Uh and so I thought, yeah, sure, why not? That's fair. That's fair. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious to talk to each of you about this, like, because we all sort of rolled with this at different times. So we, you and I, Father Gabriel decided, hey, this is something we're going to do. And then you visited for like, I think we've even told this story, maybe, but you visited for like literally five hours. You drove from Chicago, you, you literally visited for five hours or so. And we just brainstormed names for the podcast back and forth. And we did a photo shoot that I'm still milking for content on the Instagram. Yeah, that was a that was a good photo shoot. A year and a half later. Oh yeah. And and then along the way, Jess, you got involved, and Kyle, you know, you got involved. Both of you proving more vital than either of us ever could have predicted. Tell us, like, talk to us about how you guys sort of joined the project and what your initial thoughts or concerns were, what your initial hopes were for the podcast. Um, yeah, let's just kind of. Go back through memory, down memory lane that way. <laughs> Sound like such an old man. I am an old man. You married me. That's, what does that say about you? Old. I'm an old man. You married an old man. You're gross. Hey, Let's you're go back digger, down Jess. memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, I feel like I was the one to intervene and be like, hey guys, <laughs> let, let's just let, make this podcast about you guys hanging out and having fun and being yourselves. Because I feel like a lot of it started a little academic and maybe even started being what Father Gabe disliked in some of the <laughs> instructional podcasts he yeah. was listening mm-hmm. to. Um, and a lot of podcasts I personally enjoy just feel like a bunch of people hanging out and you feel like you're in the room just chilling with people. So I feel like I jumped in because I know what Jacob and Father Gabe's relationship looks like. 
and when they were starting to do this podcast, I was like, ooh, this this doesn't feel like them at all. Like, hold on. Like, I have some suggestions. Let's bring it back to the core. And well, and I will say, like, this wasn't you didn't listen after the fact. Like, we recorded two or three episodes that never aired that you I mean we asked you right from the beginning to listen to them live so you were sort of muted and listening in the background the whole time and had like immediate thoughts for us of like don't even bother sending like, that to Kyle oh, to edit that oh. was bullshit yeah it was hard to keep her muted because she was dry heaving the whole time it was just like oh, <laughs> oh. But see I know to tune that out because that's most of our marriage she's just sort of dry heaving in the background that's true so. that's true is there a dog back there <laughs> nope nope it's fine it's just my wife everything's fine <laughs> God. traditional marriage um all right, what about you talk to me about your uh how you joined up what, what are your memories of of why you got involved in this and got in so far over your head money <laughs> oh yeah he was we enslaved do, we do pay him the fat bills the fat mm-hmm. bills is true mm-hmm. yeah no uh i don't know jacob i love you man and uh I wanted to be a part of it. It just felt, I don't know. It felt like something real, like it could go somewhere. And I just, uh, I wanted to be a part of that, even if it was a small, small piece. Uh, you know, using my skills uh, where I can. You know, I don't, I don't typically like to be on camera. Here I am. But uh, yeah, so you are I don't know. building your, your fan group. Building the groundwork for your subreddit and your fan art. <sighs> yep, yep. Send us your fan art at Created Things Podcast on Instagram. We will post it. Literally any fan art we get sent of Kyle Meineke on You'll our You'll be Instagram, shadow banned from we Catholic will Creatives. Post. Catholic Creative uh, Created Things Podcast at Instagram. Any any platform. If you send any and, and, any platform any ever, actually. Art, yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike. Uh, Even if it's a joke, you're banned. We'll you're not start a, part a subreddit. Of this anymore. Yeah, we, I'm gonna start the subreddit. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna pretend to be subreddit. like. I'm gonna pretend like I have to be like a 15 year old girl, uh, and just start a subreddit and be like, "Kyle is my dream husband," and then I'll just kind of get it going, and then I'll abandon it. I'll let it kind of roll it or itself out. So you're looking, you're looking to like well catfish the entire internet, is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, basically. I really want a Netflix crime documentary to be made of me. That's one of my personal long-term goals. I think that seems cool. That seems cool. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, good. Nothing unethical. Nothing unethical. Hmm. I, you know, that means a lot to me, Kyle, because you're not often sincere. (laughs) But I appreciate you saying what you said. I do Um, hate you, Jacob. There we go. There we go. That's more comfortable. We're all we're all good like German and Irish Catholics here. So there's no greater torture than being complimented ultimately. So I I I feel a lot more comfortable with with what you just said. Um so this this has a this question has the potential to sort of blow too much smoke up our own asses. But again, white men on a podcast. I want to throw this thought out because Jessica is talking about how it, it had to be kind of the heart of our friendship. And Kyle, you're talking about how that was what attracted you to the project. Yeah. Well, I just so, wanted to be involved. Like I, I, I just support your art, you know, well, thank I like you. to, you know, I wanted to be a part of that. And Thank you. But I one thing I didn't know it was going to become this, but yeah, well, none of us did, but, yeah. w- but I, one thing that's sort of occurring to me is that, so you know you're right Jess that that the the sort of the best podcast or at least the podcast I like the best are are ones that emphasize relationship over content um and the relationship is sort of the foundation or the or the vessel for the content um and it's something that I sort of have observed is lacking in the Catholic world particularly, I mean, this is a weird niche podcast, right? Because we're ultimately an arts podcast just hosted by people who are very, very Catholic. Like that's what I always keep saying. And I, I think we're all still trying to wrestle with what the difference is between that and a Catholic arts podcast, but we're, we're, we're walking that tightrope. But something I've been reflecting a lot, and even with some of my clients is that there aren't a lot of resources. There are a lot of resources for people who want to find out what art is all about, or like what Catholicism is all about, or learn 
you know, apologetics or whatever. Right. Uh, but there aren't a ton of resources, podcast or otherwise to sort of absorb what it, what, what Catholicism feels like. And I hope, sure. I hope that that's what this is because we don't get into like a ton of theology or belief or any of that. I mean, we do on sort of the periphery, but the point is just mostly talking about beauty and talking about art and talking about shit that we find cool and that we like unabashedly and then being friends over it and bonding over it and the specific things we bond over and the sort of spiritual gaze with which we, we bond over those things. I would like to think, and I, I hope this is not to, uh, you know, smoke blowing up my assy, uh, is I think that's what Catholicism feels like. Like that's what Catholicism has felt like to me when I'm proudest to be Catholic, when I'm closest to God. Um, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I mean, does, does that resonate with you guys? What is this? What does this feel like to you? If not what I'm saying? Yeah, I dig that. I mean, uh, I've thought about this at very times because like, so I'm a, I'm a convert, you know, I didn't grow up Catholic. And, um, uh, so one of the things that you can't really learn by studying, um, and not even exactly by observation is sort of like what a Catholic does, like how you respond to these things, like how, how a Catholic culture kind of like shapes your heart and like how, how the things that you do become the choices that like generate a culture and generate a culture that like sets comes from being set free by Christ oneself and the, and pursuing that with other people, you know, um, I, uh, and like that just kind of comes from like long, I don't know. It comes from living, comes from experiencing, comes from like discovering that there are better ways to do the things that you were doing comes from like, dis you know, and uh, discovering reality more deeply uh, learning to love reality more deeply like there i think at least for americans um probably almost everybody um has to go through a phase of like um thinking that like becoming a better christian means like becoming like stricter in a certain sense which means like um being quick to say that you oughtn't to do things and like yeah, defining yourself by what you dislike basically yeah having a having a lot of sort of like very quick to say that like anything that happened after i don't know a certain time period or that's associated with a certain kinds of thing is like wrong um and uh and there's that makes sense i mean it's a logical movement of the of the heart you know that says that this kind of like radical purity that you pursue and it's that purity of these things that you can like look at and measure and like and dislike that sort of sets you apart and makes you you know more truly who you are and if you do less and less of what other people do then like the better you are okay so like this is a natural i think it's a natural temptation it's a natural movement of the heart but um uh to become a better christian i think like to read is to respond to that invitation to find life in the heart of the world, like find the life of God in the heart of the world. Um, and to find the way in which we are in fact, like not enslaved by the things of the world, but actually like set free to be, uh, to be, uh, in them, but not of them, you know, in them and not enslaved by them. Um, and, uh, and that that's, that's a sort of like a certain freedom of the heart, uh, that is set free by love. Right, that you that you receive the love of God and then are set free by the love of God uh, to love other things and love, by by loving primarily other people, um, and like that, I don't know that growth in freedom. Uh, I think it gives you the ability to then like slowly, slowly start to want to see what's beautiful about the things around you. You know, um, which I'm has not in my own case uh left me any less desirous of seeing what's uh crappy about the things around me but uh <laughs> as one could expect uh but also does does like it's the aspiration of the heart is you know to be able to free to love to love one another in like anything that we find and to be able to love what's good there wherever it is to be found i love that i was i feel like i was thinking on similar lines and I was thinking about the more, at least personally, the more I enter into my faith and enter into my relationship with Jesus, I see more and more how Christ through the word just permeates everything and how being a Christian or being a Catholic 
just changes your view on everything. Like there's always that little bit in back of your mind being like, oh, I see this, how, how this thing connects to the bigger picture, um, how Christ, the word unites everything. And whether we're talking about Saint Marinara or like, (laughs) (laughs) or the color blue, Mm -hmm. um, and mermaid manatees, how everything just is wrapped into one, um, through Christ. So that's, that's how I see this podcast. Yeah, it's interesting because so you I've often remarked that like the same the same complementary vibes and charisms that make me friends with Father Gabriel are what make me married to you because the two of you are very very similar people in your beliefs and kind of the way you see things and the things you reject um and I mean you're much more sort of Luna love good about shit and he's much more sort of Snape about shit but still you you ultimately yeah, come down to the same right. Same yeah. aesthetics. Um, my, I'm one of those people that you know. I was raised Catholic, and I do have this very strong sort of, uh, you know, vein in me of religious trauma and kind of anger at church and organized religion and things like this. But so I come in from kind of the opposite spectrum, where whenever I re-encounter God and faith, it is through art and not just like religious art, but but the kind of nerdy, beautiful things, whether that is um, some of the movies we've talked about on here that remind me, oh, right, shit, that's why I really like being Catholic. Or whether it's, you know, a particularly beautiful thing that makes me go, oh, crap, like, I do actually like that Jesus guy a lot. And he, he actually does love me a lot. And that's sort of my always my reentry point. And I, I think I don't want to speak for you, Kyle, but I think you're very similar to me in that. Cause a lot of our conversations you and I privately have been about kind of elements of that, how, you know, you and I both have kind of have come more deeply into our spiritualities through things like tattoos or, you know, certain um, alternative uh, Game music of Thrones. forms or <laughs> yeah, a hardcore pornography, uh, <laughs> SNM, uh, trained, yeah. apes, all kinds of things like that. <laughs> No, I mean, do you, but, but I don't know. Do you, do you resonate with what I'm saying, Kyle? Kyle's like, no, I am nothing like Jacob. I will never be like Jacob. I refuse to admit that. For those of you who don't know, Jacob is a bad person. Um, so I despise him. Yeah. Uh, seems fair. Seems Anyone fair. who I listens can, to this podcast knows I'm a bad person. No, I'm kidding. Um, to be quite honest, I'm a little lost. <laughs> <laughs> you drifted off somewhere back there. Yeah. No, I'm just saying like my experience of one of the reasons I'm drawn to this podcast is just because art and beauty and music and, and you know, visual art and all those kinds of things, movies and all that stuff are always the things that reconnect me to wanting to be closer to God and wanting to reconnect with my spirituality. I guess that's just what I was saying in a nutshell. Yeah, and I think I think maybe you know more know me better than than I know because uh, I I tend to be stubborn sometimes. I I could not believe we did an episode about fake rocks that sounded like <laughs> the dumbest episode ever, and then I realized, oh wow, I actually really like well themed fake rocks, and I'm just an ah. asshole. <laughs> you um, love fake rocks. You act. It's one of the things we most have in common is you actually secretly freak out over fake rocks i don't know about fake rocks but i don't think i'm as deeply involved in theming as you are huh. but that would um, that would be hard to be yeah it <laughs> would be but just theming in general i really appreciate it. and i thought i hated it and then you took me to disney world and um, and you stood in epcot and you looked at the epcot ball and you said i think i'm gonna make this my whole personality <laughs> i did yeah <laughs> Very Eddie Munson esque. Yeah. That was my Eddie Munson was the Epcot ball. It was your Eddie Munson ball. Not the Epcot ball. I thought the Epcot ball was okay, but just the sheer magnitude of Disney. Okay. I kind of get well, it. Well, in the, uh, and we talked on the episode about fake rocks, the uh, Cincinnati Museum Center and like their Ice Age section and everything else like that, which too. That was, which is legit. Un- it's legit. Which we went to and we couldn't go explore the caves, which I was very disappointed about. But we got to see the kind of pond area, and that was pretty cool in itself. So, 
they have a really cool like ice age thing anyways so I, I think you're touching on that yeah that there are things that i would i'd be sort of jaded sort of sort of uh judgmental towards otherwise and then you know listening to the podcast come to realize wow that actually is quite profound and beautiful and i think that that's uh I think that's what Jesus would do, man. I got to be honest. That's what Jesus would do. Yeah, yeah man. Jesus he would, would talk, talk about, about fake, fake rocks. rocks. He mm-hmm. would say, you are, you are Peter, and upon this fake rock, I will build my church. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pseudo Petros. Upon this uh, fake I rock, <laughs> I build my church. It's that easy, bro. <laughs> Kyle brings up a really good point, though, that he was surprised by the fake rocks episode. I feel like we've all by this point been surprised by certain episodes of this podcast both negatively and positively there have been some episodes where i'm like that is gonna suck and then mm-hmm. immediately after close of recording father gabriel and i are like holy shit that was really great and there have been a few episodes and i'm like oh man i can't wait for this one and those are the ones that i'm like could we not air that what could what have been, have the, been better maybe? what have been the episodes that have most taken you guys by surprise for me, it was the mermizzles. The mermizzles. I was like, I was not. When we suggested mermaids, I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, mermaids. Okay. And then like, oh my gosh, there just turned out to be so much to say about mermaids. And I was like, I had like a whole backpack full of like uh, scholarly books about mermaids uh, that I was, that I saw like was like pouring over for the, for the, for the whole time. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh my gosh, these mermaids are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful. I think for me, or actually, I've been listening to the Bells episode. I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know. But At the end, we say some really hateful shit, so you're going to be surprised. It's incredible, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, we, we, we just take wow. back everything we say at the beginning. Yeah, it's really? incredible. Yeah. We, you this, guys are saying hateful things? Really this is the one year anniversary and last episode. We will be <laughs> no longer available anywhere. We are canceled. Mm-hmm. Not um, only canceled, but socially cast about. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We, we will cancel no ourselves. What can anywhere. we say? Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Yeah, we're gonna become yeah, hermits, can- canceling ourselves before we get canceled. Yeah. But when you, when they said they were goes. gonna be doing a episode on bells and doing two separate interviews on it, I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem <laughs> super interesting or it doesn't seem like there's gonna be too much there to dig up but it's been it's been really good i've been very surprised and i'm thinking about bells differently now (laughs) it's like it opened a new window to transcendence Mm -hmm. like i feel like that like looking at art and discovering art and talking about art through this catholic lens just or opens new pathways of transcendence all over and it's really cool and freeing yes yeah <laughs> i love you so much only you could say shit like make that. out oh. make out if you love her <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not had enough of that of that champagne yet if she was closer mm-hmm. to the bottom of the glass maybe yeah. but she's, she's, she's still yet. dry heaving way she's too had a her. lot of a lot of it but it just would not appear that way because she filled the glass so much. <laughs> yeah, Jess. What's yeah, wrong okay. with you? you f- yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've been most surprised by some of the religious ones um, because I think being a Catholic podcast, like being Catholics, it's easier to accidentally lean too far into theologizing or evangelizing or waxing eloquent. And I mean, <sighs> relics was the one that I think most took me by surprise back last fall. Cause I mean, I said very honest in the episode, like that was something that really freaked me out. And I mean, that episode was really helpful for me personally to kind of sort through that. But also I think it, without us knowing at the time, it pointed us in a really a direction that I think is really positive where we were going to go super niche and super weird as often as possible. Cause we weren't just talking about relics. We were talking about, like the grossest relics, the relics that make the least sense and are the most uncomfortable. And that, that was fun. That made this otherwise super theological thing pretty fun. And I think that that set a tone for all the episodes after where we were like, okay, 
everything up until this point has been too broad. Like I'm looking, I'm looking for the topic calendar for the rest of the year. Um, and like, I'm looking at what kind of topics are we going to do this October? Um, and we would, if like now we would never do our Halloween episode from last year, like just doing oh, a full sure, yeah. history of Halloween. That's so broad. Like this year we're going to like, it'd be too broad to even just do like Jack lanterns. We're probably going to do a specific breed of pumpkin. You know what I mean? <laughs> pumpkin stems and yeah. how they relate to the crucifixion. <laughs> exactly. Like that. You probably shit. think they're nonsense, yeah. but let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all kinds of Christian things stem from pumpkin stems. No, that's not going to be a topic. It might be a topic. I don't know if we can find out shit on that. It, what is, do I now. Yeah, it is now. But um, but no, I think that was a nice tone setter because it was it was theological and it was you know kind of gritty and highfalutin and all those kinds of things. But it it was still weird enough that I think it made us go more niche afterwards. Yeah, that's probably true. Um. Every time I hear the word gritty, I think of um, I think of the Philadelphia, no Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh no, no, mascot, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Flyers, Philadelphia right? the Philadelphia Flyers mascot, gritty. And somebody showed me a YouTube video of somebody um, explaining uh, gritty in French, um, <laughs> and it was just like the most beautiful thing. So I agree with you. Um, it was like really, really to focus on small things like explaining gritty to french people um that i think set us set us free to be able to have the right tone that we were looking for i think that's i think it's important for those of you guys who have not seen the video version of this podcast uh kyle will often have fun with some of our running jokes uh visually and i forget which episode was it was it babies that we like kept referencing gritty over and over again and so babies or fatherhood yeah one of the two kind of mm -hmm. one of the two kind of sad parenting ones that we did um <laughs> and we kept mentioning gritty and every time Kyle would just flash increasingly disturbing images of gritty for like a frame on screen. Oh and I didn't gosh, know he was going to do it until I went back and watched it. And it was so delightful. Mm. There's hardcore porn just spread out through like the entire, <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just one or two scenes. It's fine. <laughs> like the penis that's hidden in like a single subframe of a yep. uh, fight club. Just mm -hmm. somewhere. Exactly. In there. Yeah. I've never seen fight club, but yeah, that's, they, they, they must have stolen that from me, I guess. They probably did. Yeah, it's, um, it's a back in time kind of thing. It's cool. It's mm -hmm, cool. Yeah. Kyle, were Big there any trouble. other episodes that, that particularly surprised you besides Fake Rocks, of course? Were there any ones that you were like, oh, that was actually way better than I thought it was? Or ones that you were excited for that you were like, that didn't make any freaking sense at all? It was in a very similar sense to Disney, though I had experiences with it, where it was circuses. Uh, I, I still am not a huge fan of circuses. I got to be honest, and parades. But uh, actually, yeah, I hate I hate circuses one. and parades. But thank you for torturing me with the episodes. <laughs> it was beautiful. No, thank you. <laughs> I actually began to understand it a little bit. Now, Jacob, I'm going to tease you a little bit here. One I can think of that was tickling my 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 brain right now is the projection mapping episode. <laughs> you guys have given me so much how shit you want for to that projection episode. map church. I was just thinking about. Uh, the metaverse and how you probably want to have like a metaverse church. You just want to throw in your you Oculus. Do. I, we haven't, that's what we that's haven't what. done an episode on like <laughs> NFTs or metaverse stuff. Or no, because like it's that. dumb. I, I'm pretty staunchly against them. It honestly. would be hilarious yeah, to have. I mean, we can't. We don't really it's have the like same thing, Jacob. You can't. Yeah. Per, you can't projection map a, 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 a church. It's the same thing as the multiverse, and that's that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it with you. You can like the multiverse oh, in that with projection mapping, you are physically there. What do you mean? There's a metaverse shopping, uh, shopping store. You can go grocery shopping in the metaverse. You could receive but, yeah, that's the Eucharist. In the metaverse. That's not in through real the metaverse. life. No, that's mm -hmm. blasphemy, and not even the delicious fun kind. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe projection mapping a church might be a little blasphemous. But um, <laughs> you guys have given me more crap for that topic. Yeah, that one was just like, done. bro, like, okay. <laughs> you lost me a little bit there. You, that you one just free, took me. Gotta have the freedom to take risks and then we'll make fun of you for the next you know, <laughs> yeah. year. It's fine. It's fine. Exactly. You know, we'll never forgive you. But I will give you a little bit of credit as someone who has been to parades and circuses. I hate them slightly less. 
impressive impressive that's so that i knew the circus one i didn't know the parades one that's baffling to me because i'm just imagining like a young just kyle been... just sitting there at parades his arms crossed just that's because i was like add or something as a kid i was just bored and i was like they're just driving by what <laughs> what, what am i supposed to do nobody's even shooting like what the <laughs> yeah. what is this this is shooting than grand theft auto like what the heck this is boring um, yeah it's cringe that i would even reference him but daniel tosh has a bit where he talks about how he would like parades better if they're if because he was comparing them to firework shows and he's saying parades should have a grand finale where they do one more lap but just at three times the speed <laughs> and just dancers like flying off the back of the trucks and things like this i like I, that i th- i thought you might I thought you might. That that that, that good one, Jacob. <laughs> that was good a one. classic good classic one. Classic good one, yeah. Um so I don't know. I mean, I don't know what happened. I was probably scolded as a child. That's probably where <laughs> it comes you from. Deep deep seated <laughs> yeah. parade trauma. I just yeah. Blame <laughs> the parades on the random guy who looked at me weird at a parade one day. <laughs> See, this, this is, is like, like this guy dresses movie. the turkey. Yeah. yeah. If this were a Pixar movie, there'd be like a flashback to like the to like the T minus one moment where this like little three year old Kyle just like smiling and holding <laughs> lollipops and be like, "Mommy, parade, parade, parade!" Then he goes to his first parade and then like a dog like eats his family and he's like, "Oh, oh God!" <laughs> and now I hate parades. I'll I never hate attend parades. one again. I'm gonna spend my whole life ruining every parade. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I don't know that's, if that's it's I don't know if it's because you were scolded because you like being scolded. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Good one, Jess. Kyle likes being abused by <laughs> servers at restaurants. He Seems fair. It's cool. Seems yeah. fair, by the way. It's my kink. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, we went so we This went. is information for the Kyle fandom, by the way. <laughs> I'm trying to disclose more information mm-hmm. so you can know more about your favorite guy. <laughs> you will find me that up. at the local grungy bar listening to the crusty punk band on the weekend. See, that's an episode that I actually do want to have you on, Kyle, as like an interviewee because I, I kind of <sighs> I like the idea of doing an episode on dive bars, which I hate. Mm-hmm. I have no love for dive bars at all, and and you doing what we normally do for for all these other things you know sort of convincing people of the deep-seated spirituality behind them i want you to do that for dive bars are there any other uh topics that you guys are like dream topics that you guys would really like to cover that we haven't tackled yet sex so you can have me <laughs> on as the sex expert <laughs> so, i'm the theology of the body in, guy you if fake you think saints. you're the theology of the body guy wait till they meet me yeah, yeah, you're just the body theology guy spelled with a W. <laughs> yeah, oh, there he is. Y. Yeah, as you said in uh, Fake Saints, if there's one thing that people know about Kyle that everyone says, it's that guy could probably have sex. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said that. You did say that in like the first five minutes and alienated all of our listeners. Yeah, they took a lot of people a long time to come around. That's usually yeah. how it goes in real life, though. Takes a second That's for true. people to understand, Kyle. That's okay. That's okay. Who is this mysterious man who hates parades? <laughs> Why is he here? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. What are, what are some of our uh, What are some of our dream topics that we haven't tackled yet, or maybe ones that we don't think we could ever tackle on this episode or on this on this on this series? I can go. Yeah, do it. I've always, I mean, just being super involved in the. You know, hardcore scene. I guess not super involved, but I, I attend a lot of concerts. Um, there's a huge spiritual aspect, and I think it'd be really cool to have someone in the scene sort of explain that spirituality. Hmm. I don't think that could ever happen. Um, just because no, there's a lot of happen. there's a, well, I don't know. There's a lot of like leftism that like if, if like I, I'm not trying to get political. I don't know, but like. I'm not trying just to get ha- political, just, but basically, basically there's, so, there's a lot of hurt in that community. If you're not uh, a libertarian, you're going to go to hell. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of like religious <laughs> hurt in that scene. I, I don't know huh. that there would be like a lot of um, good response to like, you know, I know we're an arts podcast, but we have a big Catholic 
following. So I don't know. It'd be really interesting to have someone who was like involved in that scene. There are religious people, but um, but it'd be more interesting to talk to people who aren't. I mean, that's that's yeah. one of the things Father Gabriel and I both said we wanted to do is like we don't require. Like we don't want to interview you because you're Catholic or oh, because right, you're a Catholic right. person who does this thing. We want to interview you on the thing, and then we want to get really personal about like the spirituality you personally bring to it, and then just sort of compare that to our own, and and try to find common ground there. So I I think that could be really cool. It could be cool. And again, there's there's a lot of uh, spirituality in that scene. It's usually not Catholic or Christian, but straight edge is sort of in itself sort of a, a very spiritual thing rather than, you know, like in AA having to give yourself to a higher power. That's usually what straight edge is to a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. That's they've been, they've been hurt a lot by drugs and alcohol in their family. And, and it's, it's a brotherhood, you know, it's, it's their community. Some people will attribute it to their church. So I think it'd be, pretty freaking awesome to have someone from the the hardcore scene i don't know who it would be but as a fan i would just be fangirling behind the scenes just like oh my gosh before it'd be so cool that would be awesome i love that idea yeah yeah like kind of related there's this um uh there is this swedish death metal band um that like sort of shocked everyone about five years ago or so by like they, they studied the the catechism yeah and to they, like blaspheme more and then became catholic right yeah exactly like they, <laughs> they had this like they had this like properly blasphemous album that was like intentionally like again like they actually learned about christianity to like be able to blaspheme gooder uh and then like they thought about it like harder and then like they became these incredibly intense catholics um and then they they released more albums as these incredibly intense Catholics. And I thought like, this would be the coolest thing on the entire planet to interview these people. Um, and then I read an interview with the, with the lead singer and like, it's so intense that I was like, I think we're going to have to have a lot more experience before we can, before we can handle somebody like this. It's amazing. Cause like the interview basically goes like, uh, you know, random, random, like uh, Scandinavian death metal rock journalist um so guys like isn't it totally weird that like nobody else believes in god but you do and then the guys the guys uh response literally begins in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit our lord jesus Jeez. christ you know it's like it's so intense Dang. and he just goes like he's a i mean it's awesome like he goes like super mm -hmm. deep and really intense for like it must have been like a 20 minutes without breathing um about like just yeah like going really deep into the belly of the beast uh and discovering that like all of that is bullshit and that like um thinking that the only way to be real is by like um uh emptying things of their meaning uh, and pursuing a sort of like shadow image of uh of like the perfection of the self by by chasing a kind of image of satan and these kinds of things he's just like yeah this is all garbage and then like goes like incredibly deep and intense into the sort of like philosophical like heart of the world being jesus christ uh that's stunning and it's beautiful and i would love to talk to this man someday but like i think we have to work up <laughs> sounds a little coke fueled in like a very positive way yeah 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 which is cool it's cool jesus is his drug <laughs> <laughs> let's get high in the holy spirit man that's amazing. You should do that interview. I'm all about all the interviews. I think the interview <laughs> episodes are really cool. I'm looking I forward was, to some we have, hopefully, in the future. Yeah, no, there are definitely some that I've been working tirelessly on. Um, we have a lot more international interviews that are coming up in the podcast in the next couple of weeks. And uh, <laughs> just finding finding ways to interview people in very very different time zones um is is becoming like a particular challenge that i didn't expect of mm -hmm. this thing um what were some other what are some i'm trying to think of some other challenges that i didn't expect with this thing because everybody thinks like i said at the opening of this everybody thinks they can take on a podcast um and that they are Oh, we're so interesting. We're going to take on a podcast and then immediately burn out on it. And I'm trying to think of some of the biggest challenges that we've encountered that the, the time zone thing is one. I mean, really early on 
you know, Jess and I were driving across the country. Father Gabriel, you were in a different city nearly every week. Um, and we sort of made it into a joke with the, the where in the world is Jake and Father Gabriel that Kyle so kindly edited together. Um, and that's about to get a lot harder because by the time this episode is posted, you will you will be in Europe for I will a good be, amount of time. I will be in Europe. Actually, technically, it will be in Australia to learn German. <laughs> I'm going to Vienna, Australia to learn German. It's incredible. Watch another shrimp on the barbie, yeah. Yeah, and we will play the cricket on the beach. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. Um, yeah, man, I'm moving to Vienna in like a couple of days. So by the time that uh, that you, uh, gentle listener, hear these dulcet tones, I will already be dulceting in Vienna. Which is great. I are I have already I have already and I I saw this coming, like I knew this was gonna happen. I forget I was talking to like a oh that's right. I was talking to like a like a distant family member uh who had heard that I was going to a place aw oh, something, yeah. Uh <laughs> and I looked at her and I was like, I know what's gonna happen next. I know what's gonna happen next. And she's she goes, like, I've always wanted to go to Australia. You're gonna have such a good time. <laughs> It's like, yeah, too right. <laughs> so, who do you uh, think resents that more? People in Austria or people in Australia? Who do you uh, think resents the confusion more? It's a really, that's Austria. a really hard question. Um, probably Austria. Um, my, uh, my friend from Switzerland uh, absolutely loved it when he got off a train um, in Canada where he had been like talking with this, talking with this woman for like two hours uh, and they get off the train and, um, uh, and uh, she excitedly introduces him to this friend of hers who's meeting her at the train and says like, oh, this is my, this is my new friend, Kristoff. He's from Sweden. Because, <laughs> you know, Switzerland, <laughs> Sweden, Swiss, okay. Swedish, they're pretty similar. <laughs> anyway, he, he loved it. He that guy. He loved it. He thought it was great. Yeah, too. it's amazing. We're not canceled. She's canceled. Yeah, I cancel everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that'll be fun. We're gonna we're gonna try to work this out. Um, I will be six hours um into the future, which is which is cool. So I can tell you things that are gonna happen, but only in about six six hour increments. It's like that Nicolas Cage movie next. Oh my gosh, are you referencing a Nicolas Cage movie? You're you're <laughs> uh, no, I'm not just... Nick Retin referencing. A Nicolas Cage movie. I'm referencing the Nicolas Cage movie colon <laughs> next, which is a He's whole universe of its own. Our Lord and Savior, Nicolas, <laughs> Nicolas Cage. Cage. That's right. Was, his first, his first Jacob testament. Of you, next. Father. Very Jacob of you, Father. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell you what right now, like the end of that movie, colon disappointment, exclamation point. But up until then, That's hilarious. Not a good one. That's not yeah. a good one. Uh, au contraire, I would say it was actually quite delightful, but uh, but it doesn't exactly quote make sense, which is part of the which is part of the charm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like that. I can only see like stretches into the future, and by stretches, I mean six hours. And by the future, I mean like what time is it going to be in six hours? And I can tell you pretty precisely. I'm looking forward to you telling me my six hour ahead future. That will be a that'll be a real asset. Yeah, but yeah. But again, I want to hear what are some of the biggest things that have kind of surprised you guys about this, uh, both in terms of challenges and and successes. Because again, my my biggest one was just gonna be how I did not expect how hard it would be to navigate time zones. That's just not something you ever consider. Um, Kyle, I know you encountered some very early like tech challenges. Uh, Jessica, I think you. I mean, you already sort of pointed out some of the things that you were able to help us through in terms of content and getting the humor there. But I don't know. I'm just curious, anything you guys have been surprised by positively or negatively over the course of this year? I mean, I guess it's just been cool seeing how you guys have persevered and like you both have full-time things you're doing. Like Jacob, you work full-time. Father Gabe, Jacob works you're a full-time full, book full reader. Time. <laughs> full, 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 full-time. Full-time. Full full-time. He's, he Father has three Gabe full-time reads jobs. books and does priestly duties and all of that good stuff. <laughs> My priestly duties. <laughs> and then, like, duties. I, I see these guys as an observer. Um, like, Jacob will be at the end of a workday 
like exhausted, can't do anything else, just wants to sit down and watch TV and is like, all right, let me do some research before I hop on the podcast for several hours. <laughs> um, and it's just really cool to see you guys do this and like mm -hmm. the the difficulty going into the different episodes. But then once you're there, seeing the way the Holy Spirit kind of picks up the slack and brings you guys into it and fills what's missing is always amazing to me. Um, so I think that's really cool that you guys have just made yourself continue doing this over and over. It's and that we've done a whole year of it at this point. It's really cool. That, yeah. yeah, that that was definitely a surprise for me though. Was or just like a a kind of like adult moment was realizing like, okay, for the first couple episodes we can kind of go with like uh knowledge I sort of have on hand or like things I can just look really really quickly. And then like as we sort of went on and like went a little bit harder, I realized like, oh yes, right, one must do this little thing called research. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Delightful, yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes, which takes time. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> delightful, yes. Yeah, that's. I did. I will say early on, there was a like, so, so relics was a turning point, but then sort of an off camera turning point for me was when I said, I refuse to do any research that I can't do the same day as the recording. And I think it's made the episodes better because I don't go in with an agenda of like, oh my gosh, I really want to share this one specific thing that I read. Um, I, I have like a certain limited amount and I haven't had time to grow an emotional attachment to any of it. So I'm totally okay abandoning all of it. If the conversation takes a very different turn, I think a really good example of that is like our recent Smokey the bear episode where I had given myself like three or four hours to kind of go back over. Cause I mean, I'm obsessed with so many weird things. And one of those things is kind of freakish state sponsored mascots and stuff like this. Right. So I, I knew a good amount about that stuff, but I, I wanted to give myself about three or four hours to refresh it. And then as we said in that episode, like three minutes in, we were like, let's uh, let's trash this whole topic and just do an episode on Smokey bear. Uh, and I don't think that earlier on had I, had I continued doing the kind of research I was doing early on that I would have been as okay being that, chill and go with the flow about it i think i would have been like oh but i have so much on mcgruff the crime dog and on you know this and that and the other thing that i want to talk about do you want to talk about mcgruff the crime dog though yeah, yeah mcgruff the crime dog is gonna have to be a whole other Using freaking yes. cocaine yes. to yes. get high because he because he literally <laughs> attacks you with crime it's inc oh my gosh he's so <laughs> kyle does Such does mcgruff the crime uh, crime dogs album smart kids count as straight edge Oh, he's yeah. talking this about is... quitting alcohol and drugs and stuff. Every straight edge person I've met has attributed um, McGruff the Crime Dog to their, you know, to their <laughs> straight, straight edge, edge choice. It seems yeah. reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they were afraid that he was going to bring, yeah, he was going to bring crime to them and they didn't want that, you mm -hmm. know? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If he had been McGruff the Crime Fighting Dog, it probably wouldn't have been very effective. Let's be totally honest. Um, yeah. No, yeah. this is incredible. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah. Yeah, I was uh, I was just hanging out with some friends and uh, and uh, in whose company I heard the song Apple Bottom Jeans for the first time, which is apparently a thing. Um, and first uh, time, yeah, is Excuse this like is this like not new? That was like you really you about need twenty to be years more ago. Of right? You okay. really do need to be more no. ashamed of how little Absolutely you've observed. Absolutely not. No. Anyway, so apparently this that is was this like middle school. My middle school boss. Really? So this is hot new <laughs> song called Apple Bottom Jeans, and it was amazing because it like a it took me forever to figure this out because I thought they were talking about like like flared jeans, you know, like like bell bottoms, you know, uh, which and then took then eventually. Wait, uh, are they not? Uh no. I it's, actually thought the same thing. I thought they were like bell bottom jeans with with furry boots. No, no, like boot cut jeans. No, no, furry my, my, boots. My, my, my friend had to. My friend had to do the gesture to help me understand. It's a transfer. Oh my god! It's a transferred epithet, and this is when it finally connected with me. It's a transferred epithet. Uh, that that strictly speaking. Uh, the apple, the apple bottomedness belongs to the woman. Uh, but it's transferred to the jeans for poetic effect. See. 
Oh wow! I know. There's so a, this is what so uh, in case anybody's wondering, this is what jeans. autism sounds like. Yeah, it's like it's <laughs> yeah, it's well, no, it's it's that a woman who is apple bottomed um, is wearing jeans, and she but you say like, wow, I love those apple bottom jeans. There's a there's an important line about this in um uh it's one of the like. It's in the first five or six lines of the Aeneid, uh, where There's Juno. No, what the fuck are you talking? <laughs> yeah, about? no, it's true. Where Ju- where Juno is described this way, it talks about a um, woman shapeth, shapeth, like an yeah, apple. like apple with apple bottom and then jeans. No, it's very, it's very important. It's the exact same kind of transport epithet. Uh, mm-hmm. It talks about um, it's uh, it goes saiwai memorem unonis idam ob idam. So it's the so the word order is like. Of the cruel, um, mindful Juno's uh, wrath, uh, but mindful connects with wrath and cruel with Juno. And you think like, well, how is wrath mindful? It's like, well, technically speaking, it's a transferred epithet. It's really Juno who's mindful, uh, and uh, and the and she's angry, um, which is the same drama as the apple bottom jeans. Is that like you got so you have a woman who is apple bottomed, um, and she's wearing jeans. But the man doesn't want to be crass and say, like, I find your apple bottom attractive. And so he says, get a load that of them. That is what I really respect most about bottom jeans. Rapper, rapper and artist uh, uh, Flo Rida. The, I respect most <laughs> about him is, is that he doesn't want to be crass. Yeah, his respect really... for the ladies, you know. So, like, so, you know, he he runs out of transferred epithets at that point, you know. But, like, but the important I thing l- is that he did it. And I respect that. <laughs> I love that Father Gabriel got in his Latin teaching or his like <laughs> language teaching segment of the episode. Thank you. I had to have it somewhere. And this was it. And this was really apropos of nothing, ladies and gentlemen, except for that I was hanging out with my friends and I heard Apple Bottom Jeans, which is apparently not a new song, but it was new to me and that's all that matters. And I wanted to tell you something I learned about it, which was very which I was very excited about. So there it is. And I Father taught Gabe Jacob is- something new about what what it means for jeans to be apple bottomed. <laughs> Father Gabe is like an old man and a young baby all at once. <laughs> He's full of wisdom, but and learning wonder. new things every day. It's amazing. <laughs> I wake up and He's every literally... day the world is newly apple bottomed. <laughs> that reminds me of this crazy, crazy like math program that like homeschoolers had called The Life yeah. of Fred. I think that's what it was. What? What? Okay. Yeah, it, it was like this like like four year old who was like super super smart and like got accepted into college. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm trying to yes. look it up to see if Wait, that's... this this is bringing back like a phantom memory for me too. Oh. Is this like yeah, a wonder? Is like a Wonder Years thing? <laughs> I don't think our family was the crazy homeschool level enough. Oh to well, be we were. To that. You, were, <laughs> you like pickled a whole horse. What the hell are you talking about? You were so freaking homeschooled. Sometimes you got to pickle Jess the horse. Just talks about Hold how on. she like. Just talks about extensively like the terrible crime she inflicted upon farm animals for years of her life. <laughs> it's not true, partially, but not entirely. <laughs> I okay. I was like hippie homeschooled, while <clears throat> you guys were like intensely Christian, strictly yeah. homeschooled. I looked it up. There it's Life of Fred. Actually, Life of Fred. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, isn't he like he's like a little cartoon character, right? Yep. Yeah. Who goes to college like and he smart. learns math? Yeah, and then all the college. No, no, no. He goes to college to teach math because he's so smart. But then he a hilarity ensues because he's a <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a four year old at college. So when he gets invited to all the frat parties, he just does not get any social cues at all. It's ridiculous and you learn so math is along the way Gabriel. because uh, the the frat party thing isn't true but you're like fred <laughs> where you're a baby who knows things yeah he's the That's boss it. baby <laughs> yeah you, you are the boss baby i'm the boss baby there's this uh there's this russian dude um who has a very specific specific kind of dwarfism that makes him look exactly like a four-year-old boy he's 18 um, but his voice. Are you and talking his, about the the Muslim, uh, the Muslim scholar who I'm forgetting it, but he does. There's a there's a Muslim scholar who's really devout, and he's he looks four years old. And uh, this he guy talks is like a four year old, and sort of orthodox. Um, oh, okay. 
uh, he goes back and forth uh, on his social media account between like dressing like an Orthodox monk and dre- dressing like a uh, Russian gangster. Um, so it's a little hard mm-hmm, to know, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, Good it's track. it's it's amazing though. Yeah, um, and he has this amazing Twitter account where he posts uh, pictures of himself doing ordinary things, um, except that he's a he's he's like an eighteen year old in a four year old's body. So um, everything has a potential for chaos and disaster and fun. Um, and there it is. Is it? Is it Hasbullah? Yeah, sound- Hasbullah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's Hasbullah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He got into like a boxing match with another person with the same vision that he did. Does he really? Wow. Yeah. Um, it was like a whole thing. It was I like Hasbullah a- versus this other person. That's incredible. Yeah. I saw an mm-hmm. episode where he was fighting a monkey. Um, <laughs> God. I'm going to say no monkeys were harmed in the making of that episode, um, which is probably, <laughs> probably not true. Probably not true. It's probably not true. Let's just like, we'll just all accept that, you know? Oh, God. That makes me sad inside. I don't like either of those things. He seems but like a really nice guy. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to interview him. We'll have yeah, to interview him on- I want to interview him so badly. I I'm don't not think totally he speaks English. I'm not but- totally convinced he speaks English, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think this is a really, really that great time matter. to be like interviewing interviewing Russian guys who act like Russian gangsters. Um, mm-hmm. But like, yes, it'll be great. That, uh, yeah, that doesn't matter because Father Gabriel knows every language, and like Jessica pointed out, he finds a, a random and barely justified excuse to use that skill in over almost every episode. That's one of the ongoing sort of secret inside jokes of this podcast. One of the other ones is that for some reason, and we don't plan to, we always, we almost always, without fail, find a organic way to bring Twilight. The, the the novel Twilight into the conversation. It's happened on like most of them. That, it's just because Jacob loves Twilight so much. Mm. And he yeah. he, fi- <laughs> he finds a way to bring it in every time. I'm not the only one who's brought it in though. That's the wild thing is like Father Gabriel more than once has uh has has brought up Twilight. That's that's one of the things Well, you know, the happens. heart the heart has its Heart has its ways, you know, and one of the ways that the heart's ha- the heart has uh, is that the heart wants to talk about Twilight, you know. Um, I am, however, going to interrupt uh, uh, in the Twilight of our episode because I have to tell you something very important, which is that we earlier told a pack of filthy lies. Um, uh, insofar as we are not technically speaking monetarily sponsored by Carlsberg, uh, which is only probably the finest beer in the world. Um, <laughs> if we are sponsored by it, it's purely alcoholically. Um, technically speaking, Creative Things is brought to you by Catholic Creatives, which is not probably the finest beer in the world, but is in fact an organization dedicated to igniting a new renaissance of faith through prayer, beauty, and the creative spirit. Um, And to do this, they connect, support, and promote artists, innovators, makers, and storytellers from across the faith. Um, But we like to think that they're not the kind of people who would look at uh, Kyle Meineke and tell him we don't serve those kinds of champagnes of beers here. Uh, We try to bring in uh, people from all across the faith um, and to bring in a whole community to bring good good and big ideas to life so uh we invite you to do something super exciting um which is to support catholic creatives patreon um which will support like us um kyle's carlsberg habit jessica's pineapple shirt buying habits um and like (laughs) other things that we do um and it will also support cool things including the four people who are not in this virtual room right now um like uh building future workshops summits reaches hours out out outsour outreaches and resources not outsources you got this you got this i believe in you i'm okay i'm okay calm down breathe so by becoming a patreon sponsor you can help make this new renaissance a reality um and do all kinds of cool things like that so Go to catholicreatives.org slash support. Um, if you feel like that's not enough for you, you're the kind of person who wants to go hard and go crazy hard. You can also go to catholic.store, which is like a place where you can buy things from Catholics for Catholics for other Catholics. If you think you might be one of those people, you can go catholic.store It's today. really sort of a digital, it's really a sort of digital Tammany Hall. You know, like a like a by Catholics for Catholics mafia kind of a situation. Yeah, I think we could start a new tagline, which could be like we can make shirts that say like FUBU on them, you know, because they're like for us 
Cat, I mean, parenthetical would be Catholics and like buy us, you know? And I just feel like nobody's because yeah, it's Catholic.store, but I think it should be Tammany.hall. Tammany.hall. I, I respect that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. since nobody else has ever run it like a line of clothing called Fubu before, like I just figured like this would be really, <laughs> like this would really connect with people, you know? Yeah. 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 It's totally unscorched earth. Yeah, exactly right. That's, that's cool. Yeah. It's great. Speaking- Kyle, Jess, I don't, I don't want to. Oh, go ahead, Kyle. Sorry. I was going to say, speaking of Fubu, it's, it, it, it's really not that important. We talked about the hardcore scene. There's a dude who wears a FUBU jersey and just absolutely demolishes everyone at every show. He just goes to the biggest festivals with his FUBU jersey and he just, the whole day is just absolutely moshing like his life depends on it. And I just <laughs> wanted to bring that up. That was it. FUBU guy. And, and that guy is Hasbullah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's why he's just thrashing these people because they'd be like, I don't know, this guy's like four years old, but he's like, No, I'm not. <laughs> he destroys them. It's good. You'll interview him on the art of moshing. <laughs> yeah. The art of moshing. <laughs> and yes. then we'll bring Kyle on for the art of stage diving. <laughs> You've like hit me in the face before. <laughs> well, I mean Kyle, who well, hasn't okay, who hasn't? Yeah, be cool with it. True. Who hasn't hit yeah. Kyle in the face or wanted to hit Kyle in the face? Yeah. Speak so so I don't want to put you guys in the spot, but I've referenced the language thing, the fact that Father Gabriel always has to, to do some kind of crazy translation. I've referenced the Twilight thing that we always have to reference Twilight. Are there am I missing any? Are there running jokes that you guys have observed, either Jess when you're like doing quality control or Kyle when you're editing it that you're like, oh God, they're doing this thing again. You guys like to say a lot of slurs a lot of the time, so <laughs> I've had to cut like you know. ten hours of slurs <laughs> out at this point. So yeah, that can I mean, be difficult to navigate. It's yeah. I don't have Tourette's, but it's a convenient excuse. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, I I I can't really think of anything. I don't I don't know. Yes. So it's funny for me listening to the podcast. Because I've heard a lot of the stories before oh. that Jacob tells. <laughs> <laughs> That's so and I can true. always tell when he's going to go into oh, one. Yeah. So I'll be mm-hmm. listening to the podcast and he'll be like, so back like in college, I knew this person I'm like, I know where this is going. <laughs> like, girl, I know where that one's mm-hmm. going, please. <laughs> I'm not married to him and I know that. <laughs> I've had that's a good point. I've had very similar experiences. In I mean, fact, you're he's like told me the same distant, story five times. Now that I think about it, yeah, you're his distant Not second wife. You know, oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> for, I'm all for sort of geographically distant polygamy. I think that really that shaves <laughs> the edge off of it a little bit. It seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I think there's like an old saying that if it, it doesn't matter if if you're it's not cheating if you're like. How many miles away? Yeah, I think it's, it's not called, cheating if it's a man, what? and it's not cheating if it's more than ten miles away. Oh, ten miles! <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Wowzers! Hope you don't live in a big metro area because you could have a lot of you could have a lot of other families. <laughs> oh Lord! So what uh, else? Let's see. What else have we not covered? I fa- I had ideas for for going into this things that I wanted to make sure we touched. We touched on running jokes. We've touched on future episodes we want to do. We've touched on shit that surprised us. Am I missing anything? We've touched on Jacob trying to stay to a schedule and be structured. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh. someone's someone's got to take some ownership of this this crazy car. We're just careening all over the place. It's easy enough with Father Gabriel and I, but with four of you. It's like a, it's like a, it's like an all gas, no brakes to situation. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong I'm, with that? I'm proud of how far you guys have come though. I feel like the podcasts have just become more and more natural over time, which is super cool. Yeah. Except for. Except for trying to give it some semblance of structure. I don't know. Was there anything that you guys wanted to make sure we covered in this particular episode before we wrapped it up? No nah, man. I think we I think we I think we circuited the I think we circuited the depths. We mm. squeezed this sponge. We are going to talk more about podcasting itself. Oh yeah, I guess we completely forgot about that idea. 
I like it very, yeah. very. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yeah, we completely abandoned that aspect of the topic. <laughs> oh well, this is like part so two, I was, everybody. So, part yes. two. <laughs> so nobody will surprise will be surprised by the fact that I was in high school speech and debate, and like you would have these debates, you know, and they'd be on like a certain subject or whatever that would be given to you, and like, but you can get pretty wrapped up in like the process of the debating and like the stupid things that the other person says and trying to attack them and vice versa and stuff like that. Uh, And so it would happen from time to time that like the person who's judging the round would write on like the review would be like, this was a really good debate, but like, where did the topic go? (laughs) Be like, guy, that's your problem. Like we had this great conversation and I proved that he was some kind of an idiot. And like, (laughs) so it was great. I felt like I came, I got everything I came here for. And if you were looking for something else, like that's your problem. (laughs) Well, I think we talked a little bit about the macro podcast thing. Father Gabriel basically absented himself because he said that he doesn't know anything about podcasts. And then, excuse Jess, me, you, I watched Wieselnicht and I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Wieselnicht. And then, uh, Jess, you talked about the the whole idea of you know friendship, and that sort of launched us into that aspect of the conversation. Uh, I guess Kyle and I haven't said much about podcasting more broadly. Kyle, I'll, I'll give you a second to to put together any thoughts you might have on the broader themes of podcasts and how it relates to this and how we compare to other things. I mean, hell, you you opened this episode with a Jake Paul reference, so you've got to be able to back that up somehow. I um I will say that when we were starting off, I I tried to listen because I knew we were going to get niche, I tried to listen to as many podcasts that cover extremely niche things as I could and see like how they did that in an inclusive way. Um, so like one of the big influences for me is a podcast that I, I really love called, um, podcast, the ride. And it's these three sort of semi washed up comedians just reviewing different, extremely niche theme park attractions. And that was something that I observed, uh, pretty early on with them is that the broader they went, like if they, if they decided to talk about like something at Epcot, as you were talking about before, Kyle, that would be a, a really boring episode. But if they chose to talk about a specific bathroom in a specific corner of Knott's Berry Farm, that would be the funniest episode that they would do. Um, and somehow it would not be overly exclusive. It would not be too inside baseball or, or clicky. And that was something that I, I, I think that's just did. you. I think you're a little too deep into the well but i listened to some other ones as well like like some comedy history podcasts and things like that and and i tried to kind of get a sense of like how do people handle niche shit in a way that doesn't alienate everybody and i think i think we've done okay with it overall we can get better there's always room for growth but we're a 10 (laughs) who isn't a 10 born fabulous Kyle, how do we compare to to the podcasts you love, like uh, Jake Paul, Ben Shapiro, <laughs> Info Wars, Info, Info Wars, Joe Rogan? <laughs> how oh, do no. we compare to all those very good and absolutely not problematic <laughs> podcasts that you love to listen to? I, I mean, well, I do not listen to the Jake Paul or Logan Paul podcast. Um, <clears throat> well, so when I listen to like a podcast i i tend to like the more education side but not like you know i'm like reading a book <laughs> so sort of what you know father gabriel was talking on and or talking about excuse me i'm drunk um from my your carlsberg, carlsberg. Carlsberg. carlsberg yeah well it's probably the finest well, beer in the since world it's so. the best beer in the world you get drunk from one <laughs> um yeah uh I think something that this podcast does, it, like VeggieTales, teaches you about <laughs> fun stuff in a fun, awesome, funny way. Um, That's the highest to, common we could ever receive. <laughs> to be a little more serious, you know, there's so many things. I mean, I, I we touched on this earlier, but there's a lot of like deep theological stuff that even if you weren't Catholic, you'd find in this podcast. And it's sort of disguised. uh, Again, like, I mean, maybe that's not a joke. I like VeggieTales way. Uh, A Zabufu. What's that show? Zabumafu? Zabumafu. With the Crab Brothers. Yeah, like the Crab Brothers. Like that kind of thing. Like it just has like a PBS vibe, but like for adults. And I think that's like a P. Thank that's the literally the high as a homeschooled kid. 
whose parents couldn't afford cable <laughs> comparing me to PBS kids. Holy shit. That is, that is <clears throat> like a, powerful a, moment. That's a platinum medal. That's I'm not kidding. That's the highest compliment I could put. I'm a PBS kid, man. It feels that way. Like, especially, I don't know what it is, but the outro of our podcast, every time I hear it, I'm like, this is the most public access thing I've ever heard in my life. But <laughs> I don't know what it is. But yeah, I think that's what kind of attracts me. And I, I'm i sort of a, a visual and like audio learner and like physical learner. So like, I prefer to do... So that's why I always try to, you know, smack you across the face whenever you're listening to the podcast, just to get the physical <laughs> yeah. component mixed in. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. important. Yeah. Yeah. Nietzsche well, says this is, how, this is how morality begins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But audio Shit and visual sex. sense, I learned like, you know, just growing up Gen Z, I guess, with YouTube, like, um, you know, I taught a lot of myself guitar through YouTube and Oh, well, I don't know. I think that there's a lot of value in electronic learning. And I think since you're a boomer father, it makes sense that you wouldn't like podcasts because you're not with the times. What's with all this? These things that kids (laughs) these days do. Back when Mm -hmm. I was listening to my contemporary Bob Dylan, (laughs) he was telling us how the times really were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I did have a friend, Bob Dylan. so this is one of those stories that Jess is going to be like, oh, I've heard this before. <laughs> so, so when I was in high school, I had a friend who fancied himself um, not just a communist or a socialist, but like an actual hardcore Marxist. He was that kid in the theater class, and he was yeah, like a hardcore reasonable. atheist, and he was a really nice guy, but he also was just like intentionally the biggest edgelord he could possibly be. And... um one of the things I would do to piss him off as a little religious uh, homeschool kid with zero social skills is that I would every year around the March for life, which is this big kind of uh, anti-abortion rally that happens in Washington, DC, in case you don't know, um, I would post Bob Dylan's the times they are a change in <laughs> and say like, Oh yeah, this should be the new theme song of that movement literally just to piss him off. And he would just be, that's not what Bob Dylan was singing about. <laughs> And it every was time, fantastic. yeah, every no, literally, like I find it on my <laughs> that time does seem hot. like it's worth doing. Yeah, I, I would find my time. I, there were literally three years in a row that that poor Brent was like, "That's not what it's about. <laughs> Stop doing that." It was so delightful. Yeah, actually, you do mention something, Kyle. That though, that I think is important to reflect on. That was a big surprise. I know for you, Father Gabriel, about podcasting. I had forgotten about this, but this is actually this is a big surprise for you. Was um, the long form nature of podcasting and that you, you at the beginning, oh, sure. were very concerned about keeping these things to like a tight 45 and the idea that people were listening and we've never, except for fake saints, fake saints was like three hours, but except for fake that, our, was, our episodes yeah. are always like our an Magnus hour and a half. Um, Magnum op- yeah, <laughs> one of those words. You Mag- 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 like that. Magnus opium. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> that, right. that sir is illegal, and if you don't start <laughs> talking about it, the greatest body of work is in the fake scenes episode. I'm gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stick McGruff and the crime dog mm-hmm. on you to make a to do a crime on you. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, but that was a big surprise for you, Father. Wasn't it, Father Gabriel? Like just just the idea yeah. that people were interested in like just two hours of straight conversation as entertainment and content. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was that was definitely an adjustment of to get used to like, oh, okay. Okay. I guess we don't want this to be like short. Okay. Or at least I didn't want to. I was like, too short, too short. It felt the conversation was just getting rolling. We need we need to extend it a little bit more. Let's go. Mm-hmm. That's if hilarious. I, if I had a nickel now for I know every the time my wife source. said too short to me over the course of our marriage just too short you would, too short you would, we're just getting started would, too short good that's one. right that's right there it is <laughs> yeah so i think i think a big part of that is just the like platform like we work from home now a lot of people i think that's what a lot of like people can do now like while you're working you can most likely listen to a podcast if you have a long commute even you can listen to some of it there on the, on the way back but you wouldn't have been able to do back when it was just radio, when you didn't have like your phone to pull up Spotify or, or Apple, you know, I sure. think that's sort of what's brought it back that like the being able to choose to listen, listen to it whenever you want, like TV, it's not dying 
it's it's having sort of a revival, but it's like in a totally different format with streaming. And that's right. what I think podcasting right. is to radio that um you know Stranger Things might not have been as popular if it was streamed at like six PM on a Monday. It might have right. totally failed. But since they post like most or the entire season on Netflix, they've generated a lot of different abilities for streaming. And yeah, I think that that's what right. podcasting does, that there's no airtime. And even if there is an airtime, you can go back and listen to it, that it's recorded, that it's posted to, to, to someone's YouTube. And I think that that's the big difference, that now it's not like something I need to tune in and listen to something for three hours versus, you know, now... If I want to listen to a podcast about some really niche topic that I want to learn more about, I can just do that while I'm multitasking and do both things poorly. <laughs> yeah, classic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's, we live in a world of progress, so this is what mm-hmm. we can do. We can do two things poorly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So That's I now have a really bad product, and I know slightly more about this topic and i have like a vague familiarity that i've heard people talk about this before but couldn't tell you what they said (laughs) which is perfect which is kind of objectively speaking what everyone's looking for yeah so i think that's a big difference i think that's sort of why we've had this revival i don't find myself listening to podcasts but i'll do audiobooks while i work sometimes and uh it's been been beneficial and it's a very similar thing yeah, yeah, I like it. I think I think the more I think it's more personal form. I mean, as someone who came from a radio background, um, you know, that that was something they were always kind of beating into us uh, was like, you have to have this interview over in four minutes because if people get to work before they're done with the interview, they're going to switch over to something else. And I was always trying to point out to them like, no, they'll they'll be late to work by a minute or two because they want to hear the end of the interview. Uh, and just, this was not something that kind of the old school, uh, establishment in, in radio was, was open to hearing, um, either mm-hmm. in the religious world or the secular world. And I think podcasting has definitely proven that true. And it's for the reason I think you're talking about Jess, where it's, it's more personal. Like my, I'm not going to have a conversation with Kyle over beers that I go, Oh, but now I've got to stop and give this, you know, commercial break. Right. It, it it makes it feel artificial. Whereas with podcasting, it's like, hey, this is real and I'm craving something real. Um and, and I'm I'm glad to be sort of providing our own little our own little piece of that. Yeah, we get to share it with other people. I always think it's wild just thinking about the process of podcasts or even just like uh YouTube or media how we're making something now in our present. Um, just we're all hanging out together right now. And it's going to be released who knows when. So different time for any of you listening or watching. But then that's going to be now for you guys. Um, and so we're extending and sharing this present moment in a really weird and interesting way. And that always intrigues me. I always think it's interesting. Wow, that is heavy. That's deep. Like extending what now is. That's a really cool idea. Father Gabriel, this is where you say, yeah, no, actually, I think that's really right. Yeah, so think about that is, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. I'm in, I'm in Apple Bottom Jeans world right now. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Now, you got to be exhausted preparing for Vienna. We should probably wrap this thing up, I guess. Yeah. Yes, I'm afraid I'm pretty wiped. So I do, I do need to run. But well, Kyle, you, you wanted to open up this episode. So that means you've got to close it. Bring us on home, buddy. Thank you for listening. Please give us money. <laughs> <laughs> me money need lot. <laughs> money me. <laughs> With no. that, go <laughs> forth and create cool things. <laughs> do, 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 do. Bye. <laughs> You've been listening to Creative Things, a podcast of Catholic creatives, hosted by Father Gabriel Toretta O.P. and Jacob Flores Popcheck, produced by Jessica Flores Popcheck and Kyle Meineke. 
To find out more about how you can support the podcast and other ventures for artists, visit catholiccreatives.org forward slash support.